Hello again. In 2013, Ronnie O'Sullivan was attempting to do something pretty remarkable. The defending champion had taken a break from the game, a sabbatical if you like, and hadn't played a single competitive match since the previous September, and yet here he was back at the Crucible. Normal service quickly resuming. In fact, he didn't lose a single session on his way back to the final. There he would meet left-hander Barry Hawkins, whose progress was remarkable for other reasons because in seven previous attempts, the man from Ditton had never made it past round two. At the time, I didn't, didn't feel intimidated at all. I felt, um, felt confident and um, we had a fantastic final, I thought. Um, some people say it's probably one of the best standard of finals they've, they've ever seen. My memories of the matches, it's probably the best snooker I've played in a long format match, you know, where I was just consistently making 80s, 90s, 100s. I think I had six entries in that match. If this was all new to the modest Hawkins, it didn't show. He certainly wasn't overawed. In fact, they shared the first six frames in fine style. There was a break of 50 or above in each one of them. Let's pick them up in frame seven then. Thank you, frame seven. Only O'Sullivan to break. Ronnie breaks off. Uh, looks to be a pretty good break off shot. He now is no, he's got a match on his hands. He's got the file there just to rough up the tip. The tip can get a little bit uh, shiny. Oh, too thin, and look what he's done. Say, look what he's done. Maybe uh, there's no easy pot. Mm, that's very tight, and he's not directly in behind it. This is the error of the safety shot. Ronnie's playing the more difficult of reds. He, he feels if he was directly behind it, he could pot the red. We showed you it did go off one cushion, but he's decided to play the more one. difficult red and played it nicely. There's Ronnie just roughing that tip Six. up. I remember Ray Reardon used to give him a tip that he could put in his, or a file he could put in his pocket. He couldn't put that file in his pocket. The great Ray Seven. Reardon used to always carry a little file that he kept in his waistcoat pocket. It seems like 15. only five minutes ago that Barry Hawkins led 3-2. Uh, there's a chance now he could be going behind again. But I think having trailed 2-0, I think the key thing was just to get a foothold in the match. He wouldn't have minded, obviously, as long as he won at least three frames of the session. He's looking at a lot more, obviously, but... Uh, just stay with Ronnie, put him under a bit of pressure. And this is the first time Ronnie has been put under pressure in this tournament 22. so far. Twenty-three. Still plenty of uh, loose reds, there's six reds still available. That's why Ronnie's not playing any cannons at this stage. Thirty. Mm. 
Well, there's a charming gentleman there, Hugh Edwards, the BBC News presenter, and his son, Sammy, who I met in the corridor at the interval. He loves to come along to the Crucible. Big snooker fan. Won't be enjoying this attacking play then, will he? 31. He's engrossed, isn't he? This now developing to be an excellent chance again for O'Sullivan. <coughs> Obviously, with his great pal here, he's been here for 17 days. The renowned artist Damien Hurst uh, in Ronnie's corner, and there he is. Looking very intent, isn't he? I'm sure that uh, he's probably a little bit nervous for the first time for his pal. Thirty-eight. Forty-four. Yeah, you could hear a pin drop in the crucible at the moment. As we mentioned earlier. 45. Most of this crowd thought it was going to be one-way traffic, the way Ronnie O'Sullivan has been playing. But that man in the background there, Barry Hawkins, had got other ideas, and he's played three he terrific frames. 52. It's all about the little cannon this time as to whether he clinches the frame with one visit. Yes, it could definitely go wrong, couldn't it, this uh, this cannon here? He could stick on the pack, so he has hit the red on the left half ball. He did half ball, made sure he didn't stick on the pack, and OK, he wouldn't have known he'd been pushing that red over the middle. He would have expected to be on one in the corner, but he'll take 59. that. The standard continues 50 or above in every <coughs> single frame. 60. Sixty-six. Sixty-seven. Yeah. Seventy-two. The frame safe. So Ronnie can concentrate on making another century. He's made seven so far this year. We've had 47 in total. But just listen Eight. to this. This man has made 689 century breaks. 81. Incredible. Crucible centuries, Willie, he's made 125. Well, there's uh, some players in the top 60 at the moment that haven't made 125 centuries in their career. And he's made 125 here at the Crucible. 89. 95. 96. That's a fabulous response from Ronnie O'Sullivan. 103. Terrific century break, the first of this year's final. How well did he do that with the rest? <laughs> Where is that cue ball going? 111.
Well, surely even Ronnie O'Sullivan can't fault the green. Don't put it past him, though. It's a thin one. Oh. Not quite. He won't bother about that. That was a magnificent century break. What a response from the rocket. In a matter of no time at all, he's back into the lead with the end of that century break. Four frames to three. Well, absolutely the way he's played so far, but he's obviously got Ronnie O'Sullivan in the same form he's played out throughout the last 16 days. I mean, Barry's already made breaks of 88, 81, 45 and 50, but O'Sullivan's bettered that with 74, 92, 76 and 113. So both players in great form. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out. Just doing a little bit more work on the Q-tip there in between frames. That is a big file, that. Where has he got that from? <laughs> close. It's close. It's in. Oh. Only going to cost them four point. points, though. <laughs> Last frame of this session. Ronnie won't be taking any careless shots on. You want to win the session 5-3. That's what you set out to do over a long match. Look at the average frame time, under 14 minutes. Terry Griffiths there that was talking with Jason. <laughs> Used to take Terry 14 minutes to break off sometimes. Harsh but true. Well, Barry's uh, can get through to the potting angle of this red, but he can't. There's no value in potting at all. He's just thinking if he just pushes it towards the black cushion, leave the cue ball very near this cushion, but. The way Ronnie's queuing at the minute, he might take the red on that's behind the black. So he's got to be careful here. If he just drags it, he'll be leaving that red on. Just trying to slow the cue ball down, but that red will be on behind the back of the cushion. <coughs> Tempter. It's a tempter, but he's going to get over for the blue. If he pots it. One. Well, you could say he got over for the blue. And he got perfectly on the blue. You won't see many better shots than this. Have a look at this. Powered it into the pocket. The pot was difficult enough, but to finish the correct side of the blue, well, that was even better. Six. Seven. This was his pot. Have a look at the white. He hit Nine. it that hard. The white bounced right in the air. So it just shows you how accurate the players are with their queuing. Look at that. It bounced at least three or four times, and the red bounced. Absolutely. But he's just queuing so well. I mean, his position throughout this tournament has been as good as it's ever been. OK, his long potting wasn't as good uh, in the early matches, but it, that's started to come back now. And there's another wonderful shot. <laughs> He's got the pink in play now, so he doesn't have to worry about the black. 15. 
Just wonder when the pink goes 16. back onto its own spot, whether there'll be enough room for the pink to be available. There's bringing the pink into play. Always thinking all the time, just needs one of the colours in play. Doesn't mind if they're both not in play, as long as one is. Now, when the pink goes back into its own spot, it'll definitely be available in the right-hand corner, but is it available into the left-hand middle? And there's your answer freely. 22. So this is an excellent chance now for Ronnie to open up a two-frame lead for the second time in the match. 23. Because the frames have gone... 29. So quickly, the players will have a couple of 30. hours, two and a half hours or so, to uh, relax before this evening's session. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. It's going to come up a little bit short on the blue. But he has got the loose red. He's got a choice of shots here. He can go into the bunch, which he probably will do. Watch the side when it hits the two cushions. No, it didn't catch it as he wanted. He might still be on this red. So a little bit of good fortune. 41. Oh, very much so. Once he's caught the jaw, the cue ball could have finished any bear. And Barry, as you see there, just dropped his head. Just caught that jaw. He was playing two cushions into the back of that cluster of six. but. Now he's on this red, he could get an angle on the colour. He'll still have to play a cannon. Now where's the cue ball going to finish? Half ball green would be nice. It's amazing. It? When you're playing well, it's amazing, isn't it? Everything finishes perfect. I mean, half ball yellow or green can take you into the pack. Stick. That's the angle he's looking at. And that's through the black also. 44. That's a bonus, but he, he played the shot beautifully, and now he can just cannon the red, leave the black on. So 45. it was a bonus when he freed the black, but he deserved it because he played the yellow so well. well it's amazing, he played three shots on the trot where a little bit of fortune was involved, and every time it finished perfect. I'm sure when Barry sat down, he thought, well, he can't 52. clear up now. But with the pack all tied up, black tied up, two shots later, everything's in open play. 53. I'll tell you what, for a, a table that's not supposed to be playing all that well, have a look at the breaks the players 60. have made. It looks to be beautiful from my point of view. 61. Barry's had 88, 81, 45 and 50. Ronnie's had 74, 92, 76, 113, and this this is some standard, Willie, isn't it? 66. Well, we were thinking that Barry could mm. possibly take a lead into the session when he led 3-2 for the first time, and we thought, well, can Barry win the session 5-3? All of a sudden, Ronnie O'Sullivan seemed to change gear. 67. One of the few players in the game that can do that. Seventy-two. Seventy-three. This break has just been absolutely perfect. Well, we told you in the last room, you know, 48 centuries we've had. Ronnie's 80. had eight. And it looks 81. like a certain century here, Willie. Terrific to watch, isn't it? Well, this crowd have been absolutely thrilled. The way that both players have played, not just O'Sullivan. We keep 88. saying everybody was worried about how Barry Hawkins would, would play. I've been mean, struggled yesterday. But 89. The standard of this session has been probably one of the best sessions we've had at the Crucible this year. 95. 
Standing, an excellent session from both players. O'Sullivan in great form, two centuries to finish. And then O'Sullivan goes into the second session this evening, leading by five frames to three. Every time he got a bit close, I kept pulling away, and he'd get it close, and I kept pulling away. And I thought, I know I'm going to win frames in one visit. I felt that good. He made me play that well, and I knew I had to play well. He played better, a lot better than I expected in many ways, although I know he's a great, great player. He's a great player. I didn't expect him to, to be that good. Try to get the outside edge of that red. No real danger, of course. So. Well, just coming around to have a look. Is there a possible yep. shot to nothing on? No, nothing on. So back to its original position. It's quite a tough shot, this Willie, because he's got it. As you said, he's got to almost take the paint off this red here. I think so. Can you just put it up? Yes, he'll risk it once That's more, won't he? He'll, he'll risk the thin, thin cut again, and then he'll be warned should he not hit it. So he'll have one more try at this, and then play an alternative. That's where it was. That's where it is now. Yeah. Happy? Pretty Coming. good. That could one of them could go close to the pocket, so that's why he's taking an alternative safety shot here. That's an excellent return. <laughs> that's one of the great things about Ronnie O'Sullivan's safety game. Purposely wanted to keep the cue ball down behind the green on the right hand side of the table. Because of the red that's close to the right-hand side cushion, it's a little bit more difficult to get it back to safety here. If you leave the cue ball down the left-hand side of the table, there's a straight part back, but this makes it a little bit more awkward. Yeah, 
Yes, the red that's behind the black is in the way to play the, th the thin cut into the corner. He'd play it if it wasn't. So he's only playing a safety shot here. It's a perfect angle if, the, if that red wasn't there, just to pot it and go around the back of the black, but he can't play it, so he may just have to play what Barry did on his previous shot, a very thin one. This is bringing the black into play, so whoever pots the next red, you'd say we'd get a sizable lead in this frame where the balls are now. Well, Barry's won that safety battle and won it well because he put Ronnie in trouble on three occasions. And on the third occasion, he played a, a poor safety. Now, pink and black in play. Barry would be disappointed if he doesn't get at least 40 from here. Whether he goes on to make a, a frame winning break, we all know in about seven or eight minutes. These couldn't One. be any better, Ken, could they? Yeah, nicely placed and doesn't have to worry about going into any reds for a foreseeable future. Wants to get this black open into both corner pockets. <coughs> Pop this red now. We'll do that. Eight. Nine. Yeah, I think if he can put the black, just disturb that red that I have a little circle around. Because if I think if he nudges into that red, he's got the red just to the left of that is open back into the corner pocket. He can just play a little stun shot into that red if he feels it's the right shot. Well, didn't go for another that occasion, and that may tell us that that red may be a little bit awkward, the one just to the left of it. But this one on the pink... 16. ...certainly pots. Seventeen. You couldn't believe this was the same player that was playing in the first two sessions of the semi-final. He looked almost frightened to play. Looked anxious when he got in the balls. He missed probably 30 or 40 balls that I'm sure if all the snooker players in the audience would have thought, well, I could pot those, but he's 22. Uh, certainly a different player now. Looks in total control of his emotions. And make no mistake, the way Ronnie's played, he knows he's going to have it all to do. But let's not forget, Ronnie was a, a pro player two years ago and he wasn't winning every tournament. We know he's the best player when he's playing well, but he, you know, like every player, he's vulnerable, he's beatable. <coughs> yeah, I suppose what Barry has to do is just worry about himself and his own game, not really worry about who's in the other chair. Because once you're sitting in that chair, there's nothing you can do when you're at the table, and that's the most important thing to uh, understand. 29. The one thing he does very well, he 30. takes what's on, always looking, mops up the easy ones. Got us up a good lead. Thirty-five. He's running out of reds now, though, Ken. And I agree with you when you talked about that little stun on that red. If he'd have played that early, he wouldn't have been drifting around around the blue spot area. Now, you can get. 
play for the gap in between those cluster of three and cluster of four. And that's what he's playing. So getting rid of this one now opens another red into the corner. So that's a pretty good shot. 40. Forty-one. I'm sure that red, just to the left of the black that's in the little pyramid, goes into this bottom left-hand corner pocket. He's a nice cannon on these reds here. That looks perfect. Forty-eight. Just wondering whether when he runs this in, he can miss the, the kiss on the red that's on the cushion. That's what he needs to miss. He may screwing it in, so he's going across the face of the black, which could put the cue ball near the pink, which make things awkward. He's played it nicely. Nice. Didn't want to be hampered by the pink. 49. Just needed to get hold of that cue ball enough to just slide it past the pink there to save him queuing over the pink. This now an excellent chance to level the match for the first time since the fourth frame. 56. There you see, 52 ahead. <coughs> We're still going to need a few more reds and colours yet, but the way the balls are positioned, you have to say he's going to win 57. the frame here. And this is extremely impressive stuff from Barry Hawkins. Looks very composed, got a nice pace around the table. <coughs> Controlling the cue ball very well. 63. I think he's actually playing better now than when he beat Ding and uh, Mark Selby can, isn't he? Well, there's no doubt, you know, beating the world number one, Mark Selby, and then, of course, beating Ding would have given him great confidence. And I think maybe the occasion of the semi-final, playing Ricky Wall and knowing what was at stake, getting into the final, playing Ronnie O'Sullivan. There was a lot of pressure on both players, and, and there's no doubt it got to them a little bit, but once they settled down into that match, he played his best snooker. He's continuing on with that now. Got to be a little careful here. He still needs the red. Yes, I just wondered if he might snook himself there, but played it nicely. He's trying to drift by those two reds, and he's got an angle on the black to get onto the one just below the pink in the same pocket. Just screw through the gap. 77. 78. After the next. 84. Well, people were talking about the fact that Ronnie O'Sullivan could outscore Barry, the fact that he's been playing so well, but this next little caption we're going to show you after this black just shows you how well he's competing with Ronnie, not only on the frame scores, but there he is, he's only one point behind, so he's scoring exactly Nine the inch. same strength as Ronnie, and Ronnie's had two centuries. 93. So the points now are identical, but the key thing is... Barry Hawkins is levelling the match. And what an amazing stat that is as well. When this ball is potted, they've potted exactly the same amount of balls. What a fantastic break. It's fifth century of the tournament. And it's a milestone, really, because it's the 50th century of the tournament as well. 101. 
111. One hundred and fifteen. One hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty-six. I'll wait for the noise when this black goes in. Excellent break of one hundred and thirty-five from Barry Hawkins. He levels the match. It's now seven frames each. He's left a red on this time, I think. Can you see the one to the left of the pink? as well. Perfect side of the blue now. Six. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. And it's a very important time in the match, this. He doesn't want to go behind for the second time. He was behind at 3-2. He's been in front ever since. 22. 23. Yeah, getting the awkward red out straight away. One close to the back cushion. Just frees up the black, particularly the cue ball, using that back cushion for positional play. <laughs> 39. Gonna need one good split on the Reds. Possible break on 145. Ronnie won't be worried about that just yet. He wants to win the frame in this position first. He needs one good split to, s to get ready for the counter attack. And that looks okay. As long as he's not too straight on this red 46. into the right center. Does he have an angle to get up top side of the blue? 47. It nicely. That's perfect. It's a wonderful. 
the full camera angle. Fifty-two. Just looking to see if we can get through the gap of these two reds, because it will certainly be the easier with the reds, but as you can see there, it's tight. Have a look at this little picture here. It's very, very tight. I, I thought he'd be playing that red because he's got a little bit of work to do with this cue ball. Just send it around the back of the red. 53. And the reason it's a little bit of work, it was easy to overscrew that. As it happens, there's just the per perfect angle to kiss onto the red next to the pink. Well, he's playing to hold it, but that's still the same thing. He just played up into that area. Beautiful break this, Ken, isn't it? Yes, it's been absolutely perfect. Average frame time, less than 15 minutes. 61. 68. 69. The round of applause from this knowledgeable, crucible audience tells you that Ronnie O'Sullivan has just passed the snooker's required stage now. How big can this century be? 1-3-3, three, three, the last frame from Barry Hawkins, the biggest of the match so far. This could be eclipsed in about three or four minutes' 75. time. Possible 1-4-1, but he'd be taking the pink, so possible 1-40. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. Eighty-nine. Ninety. There you see it. Eight blacks, one pink, three blues. This has been... Absolutely top quality stuff. Go on, Missed one long shot, it cost him the frame. The standard is superb. It's O'Sullivan now leading 8 7. Clearly there, made sure he hit the safety shot a little bit harder and uh, unfortunately for him, it's stuck a red over the corner, albeit dead straight. Now, Barry has not potted one of these long straight ones for two or three shots. This is a tough one. Yes, always missable, those. Always missable. <coughs> Just lost his way for a second. Having, having made one three three, Ken, you thought he'd really got a foothold in this final and a chance to put Ronnie under pressure and he just hasn't done it the last frame yeah, and a half. Yeah, he's normally so good at that shot, he stays so still, but you saw from his back arm, it just a little bit of movement there. And that's why he's trying to put a bit more pace into the, the cue ball, just to bring it back a couple of inches to be high on the black. One. <laughs> Just have a look at his back arm there. Yeah, you just see the little bit of movement, and that's why he's just come across the the cue ball. And that's why he subsequently missed that red. Another excellent opportunity Six. now for Ronnie. Ninety. Ninety-six. 
Seven. Well, this is where this is where Fourteen. Is really good. Puts the heat on his opponent. Fifteen. Once he gets his nose in front, a couple of frames, he's very, very difficult to stop. 22. 23. Well, another 30. One has just slightly got away. Is he on this red? It's very close. Shot here to get back on one of these loose reds. Thirty six. It's not bad. Thirty seven. Not absolutely perfect. See, he's a bit straight on this black. He's a lot of power again. It's a slow up. Just. 44. 45. Everything's going into the heart of the pocket at the moment. Fifty-two. Fifty-three. Sixty. Sixty-one. Sixty-seven. Sixty-eight. And yeah, you see the break. Six blacks, one pink, two blues. This has been superb because he's had to go in and out of bulk. Seventy-five. He's had to pull out a couple of tough pots and tough positional 76. shots. But he's kept the break going wonderfully. And at the moment, he's just moving through the gears. 83. Still a few sighs and moans and groans. He's still not completely happy. But at the moment, everything he's looking at is going into the pocket. 84. <laughs> 86. 88. Well, this has been an incredible standard so far. This is going to be three centuries in a row. 91. Mm, there's a little exhibition shot from Ronnie O'Sullivan. 95. <laughs> Century number 52 of this year's World 100. Championship. Number 11 for Ronnie O'Sullivan. 106. Shh. Well, he misses the block, but he won't be bothered. 
106 break from Ronnie O'Sullivan. He puts another frame on the board and now goes into a two frames to lead. It's nine frames to seven. You can easily get carried away just watching him and, and enjoying the way he plays, you know, sitting there and thinking, I wish I could make it look that easy, but uh, the frames go so go by so quickly, especially when he's banging in big breaks. Before you know it, you've lost three or four on a spin and you haven't even done much wrong, really. So uh, you've got to uh, compete with him in all departments. Yes, 9-7 to O'Sullivan. He's produced some quite flawless snooker. And yet Hawkins is competing very ably here. He'd come to the Crucible, that campaign, ranked as the world's number 14 player, but was full of confidence after a bit of a breakthrough. A first major title had come his way the previous summer in Australia. So back we go. This is the last frame of the first session. Ronnie leading by seven points, one red remaining. Decided to risk playing the slow shot, but as I said, he's going to be virtually straight on this pink. I didn't see the value of playing for the pink there at all. Eight. <coughs> Bemused. Trying to get the cue ball just three or four inches to the right of the black. Oh, listen, has he played that? If he has, it's what a shot is it? Well, you won't see many better safety shots than that. Played to perfection. JV always says it's not hitting him, it's getting them safe. He's hit it. Has he got it safe? Has he got it safe? He needs to pull up. Well, we haven't seen Ronnie play too many of these deep screw shots. Judd Trump would love this oh. shot, wouldn't he? But how's Ronnie going to play it? Well, he decided not to screw back, but to run through. Two. Almost perfect, but the green doesn't look on. Yeah, he hasn't had a look at the score, but this green is very important. He didn't go for that. He was trying to get a sneaker behind the pink and black, and he may have played another absolute <laughs> What a shot he's played on. Yeah, Alan Hughes and I was in the crowd, but he didn't play the pot there. And that's a fantastic sneaker. Oh, no wonder <coughs> Barry's scratching his head. I mean, goodness me. You've seen two of the best safety shots we've seen in the whole tournament in the last 10 minutes. This is by far and away the longest frame, coming up to 28 minutes. But in some ways, it's been the most exciting. Well, it's Barry's turn to try and get the cue ball him. His target will be to kiss the black, so he can play twice across. The brown's going to be naturally safe. It's just a case of missing the blue. He's got to miss the blue by an absolute fraction to get this shot right. Yeah, I'm not too sure it was on because the blue was in the way. But it's got plenty three. of distance between cue ball and object ball. There's only seven points in it. This is cuttable, but I'm not too sure he can hold for the blue. The 
Is it there again for the third time in this frame? Is it there again for the third time in this frame? Wow, good effort. Good effort. Good. Well, is there a gap? Can he get... <coughs> can he see this brown and even pot it? This would be unbelievable. Just had a nuts gap. Four. He has a quick look at the scores. He's 11 ahead. He just needs the blue. Yes, a massive four points that for Ronnie because obviously Barry needs the three balls. So even if he leaves this blue on, he's going to have to play a good shot to get the angle on the pink to be able to get on the black. So it was a massive four points that was. Brilliant shot on the brown. Oh, the little tinker's trying to knock the pink safe, but he's not in hard enough. Four. Well, <coughs> will he play the sole role, try and drop this blue into the corner pocket? He could try and play the snooker, of course, as well, but will he try and take this blue on? Decisions, decisions. Well, he did play it, Ken, but you know what's going to happen here. The, the white will be kissing the black and he'll be behind the pink again. Mm. Always under hit this. <coughs> oh, that was careless for Ronnie. This, this is cuttable in the middle. <coughs> it's so much margin of error there, Ken, didn't it? The fact that the black was where it was. He could just play the cannon on the black. It was bound over the snooker. Yeah, he just got too much side, but as you said, this blue was cuttable. Definitely worth having a go with this. It's a tough safety shot, isn't it, to play it any other way? Well, if he plays it hard, the cue ball will definitely be coming down close to the pink, so as long as he doesn't undercut it. If he undercuts it, he'll definitely leave it up. If he overcuts it, he may still come in away safe. With it. Mm. Good thinking. Ball. He needs it to bounce about eight or nine inches so he can get onto the black. Oh, it's Five. tough. The pink he can pot, the black probably not. Well, there's Barry's friends and family, mother, father, sister. They've got the fingers crossed here because this is a huge frame. The pink's there. He well, it's decision time. Do you play the cushion on the cushion or do you play the guaranteed safety shot? Quietly, please. It's a safety. Oh, he's overhead it. Barry Hawkins, he's 11. Overhead. Straight away, he was up out of that chair. Right, settle so down, quick. please. Thank you. Black for the frame. Yeah. 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 Well, what a tremendous yeah. black! Yeah. What a tremendous frame. Both players have been very pleased with a nice Thank work. You, the you. crowd Thank standing you. ovation for these two great players. They've treated us some fantastic snooker. It's Ronnie O'Sullivan who takes a three-frame lead into our afternoon's session. What a game. When play resumed on the Monday afternoon, they shared the first couple of frames. Ronnie, 11 frames to eight up now. Into the next we go, and it's Barry on a chunky break here and needing just one more red to take the frame. He's missed it. He's missed it. Oh. Oh, yeah. He just got too close seconds. to the cushion there. Yeah, 54 points behind, 59 remaining on the table. Yeah, 
he's not got many points to One. play with here, Ronnie. So this is the, the big problem he's got. The Reds are in reasonable position, but they're at the wrong end of the table for him. Trying to force the cue ball. Unless he gets a good kiss, he's not on anything. Eight. Nothing easy, anyway. He may have this red to this left corner pocket, but he needs pinks or blacks. <laughs> a marvelous shot. Nine. Not perfect on the black. Just a little bit low on this black. If we can get close to this red on the left hand side of the table, anywhere in behind it, close to the cushion, and try and get it into the right center. He yeah, needs to go a little bit, get behind it, and he's got it into the right. Almost perfect. Just calculating the scores, he can possibly take a brown. He's 38 points behind. Red and brown, left needing the last red with a pink or black. That's why he's gone up for the blue. Needs to run. 17. He can't get close to this red. Well, that's what he's uh, thinking of now. As I say, it was always going to be difficult because he didn't have that many points to play with. He's looking at the scoreboard now. Pots the blue. He'll go 32 points behind. So, off this last red, it's got to be blue or above if he's going to win the frame at this visit. 22. And what a clearance this would be. Absolutely fantastic shot. Have a look at this. That's queuing at its finest. Around the angles here. Well, he's going to leave the long yellow. Tardy might go around off a few cushions trying to get close to this yellow, but he's going to require now another good pot. 28. There you see it. 26 behind, 27. And Barry, of course, will be sitting in his seat, suffering. <laughs> because he only needed that one red. And he missed his chance. Will he get another? Oh. 30. Well, has he got an angle on the screen? What the shot he's just played there. Cued that in so nicely. Need side. Watch the side. Absolutely perfect on the black shot. He's pulling them all out of the fire here. This will hurt Barry Hawkins. This could be the turning point in this 37. final. Barry Hawkins led by 54 with 50 mine remaining. What a clearance this would be. 42. He's not come perfect on the pink. A little short. Tremendous amount of right hand side, and now the black to win the frame by one point and make Barry Hawkins really regret missing that frame ball red. In it goes, it doesn't get much better than that. Believe me, that was a sensational clearance. No points to spare, absolutely brilliant. Barry Hawkins had his chance, missed one red, and that was enough for Ronnie O'Sullivan now to go four clear. 12-8, what a frame. Well, a superb contribution of 90 in frame 21 from Hawkins reduces arrears to 9-12 now as we head into the next. Well, it's a pretty good length with a breakout shot, but there is 
a red for Ronnie to take on. Now can Ronnie knock a long pot in here? One it just shows the importance really of that break off shot. He got a good length, but uh, nothing safe when the players are potting like this. You've got to get to find the top cushion, don't you? And he was very close to finding the top cushion there, but Ronnie was able to play the shot to nothing. He's on the choice of green or yellow. The green would have held better position. The two reds to the right of the pink look easy to get onto from the green. He's actually looking at playing the deep screw now and trying to get onto the two reds above the black, which you wouldn't blame him because if he gets on those nicely. Well, still playing the same shot to run through this time, but left-handed running through, not bound to get perfect position. But that's OK. Three. When he switches hands, it's quite amazing. Uh, he just looks so comfortable. A few players in the years gone by, people like Fred Davis. Well, myself, I used to switch hands because I didn't like the rest, but I'll tell you what, I couldn't. <laughs> I could only play some shots left handed. 12. This fella can make century <coughs> breaks with his opposite hand. Coming right in behind Ronnie O'Sullivan as he slots that black in. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-seven. Ronnie, as ever, leaving an angle on the black, albeit there is a, a loose thread he can play for in the middle if he wants, but we know the key is here to not hit one of those reds full ball, but he's playing for the loose one. I'd like Ronnie to do that. He probably feels there's a better opportunity from possibly the blue or the yellow 35. to go into the bunch. <coughs> Probably because that pack was a little bit flat at the back there. Didn't fancy sticking on one of those reds. He didn't drop on this red as he intended. He's got a little bit more to do with the cue ball to get a good angle on the blue. Thirty-six. He made that look easy. Difficult to go into them from the black, but to come in off two cushions and open them like that was a bit special. Already 41 points in the lead. It doesn't take them long to win a frame. Forty-two. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. <coughs> A 
already 55, 55 ahead, so not that many more pots needed to open up a four frame advantage. 56. We talk about Ronnie being such a natural player and not only the way he pots balls, he just seems to fall into position as he walks around the table, he just seems to just be absolutely perfect. You know, he doesn't have any shuffling around and... 62. I know it's possible that Ronnie has probably played better at some time or another here at the Crucible, but I think this year especially, a lot of 63. players have been struggling with their position, but Ronnie O'Sullivan's position, all this two weeks of this Betfair World Championship has been pinpoint. I think that's the key difference to this, isn't it? I mean, we know he's a great player, but the cue ball control has been immense. 70. Seventy six. Seventy seven. If he could make a century here, he would equal the highest number of centuries made in a final. It would be five. He's got a difficult red though, near the cushion. Eighty four. Eighty-five. Ninety-two. Ninety-three. And he's absolutely perfect on the difficult road. Ninety-nine. His 12th century in this year's World Championship. He made 12 last year when he lifted the crown. 108. And what a sensational break this has been. Not a lot Barry Hawkins could do about this. He got a reasonably good break off shot close to the cushion. Ronnie knocked a long red in. End of frame. 115. This could equal Barry's high break of the match, so 133. 120. And this is another record he's taken away from Stephen Hendry now. He's made the most centuries here at the Crucible. And now he's made more centuries in the final than Stephen Hendry. Well, it doesn't get any better than that. He's just got half a chance and he knocked a lot in. That was a fabulous 133 break from Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's back to four in front again at 13-9. Ronnie would also win the next with an Oka 67 to lead by 14 frames to nine, but he just couldn't shake this man Hawkins off. He took the 24th frame to reduce his arrears, and this now is the last frame of the afternoon session. That's what it's all about. Uh, that lady on top of the World Championship trophy that's been around since <coughs> 1927. Who's going to get their name on it this year? Will it be Ronnie for the fifth time? Or will we see a new name on there? This last frame could tell the story. Because if Barry can take it and get back to 14-11, there'll be a lot of snooker to be played this evening. Eighteen is the magic number. And you can see all the famous names on there. Oh, what a shot he's played there. Trying to just nestle on the red. That's just to the left of the black. Looks good to me. 
Looks very good to me. He might be back in the similar position again. Not this time. No snooker and a path back for Barry. Slightly misjudged safety, but no red possible that he can get onto a killer, so we're playing back into the bork area again. Both players have been under hitting that kind of shot when they're playing two cushions back into bork. There were suggestions that table was playing a little bit slower yesterday, but it appears to be playing a little bit slower today, I think, the way they're playing the safety shots. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about the table and the new cloth, but um, this was one of yesterday, just checking to see if the cloth was maybe a little loose there. But I think when they're in the balls, there's no problem. He was checking both sides of the table. They still get the reaction out of the cloth. It might just be slightly slower, but not necessarily a bad thing. And I think the breaks that have been made have proved that. Yes, I think the standard in this final has been absolutely fabulous. I mean, both players have been scoring pretty heavily. Both had a break of 133. Well, this is one of those he can definitely take on, Barry. Just looking to see if he can screw back off the cushion just before the middle pocket and be nicely on the pink. But he's got to... He can't afford to come too far over just in case he misses it. I think he's looking at this red and... It looks to me he would cannon into the black and maybe bring it into play if he pots it. And he's, well he's freed the black. He was hoping to knock the black towards the pocket. He made a pretty good job of it. Deserves to be on the pink, but it's not a gimme. unlucky with a the kiss there mind you I think uh, at one stage you would have been concerned about the pink is it uh, seven looked as if it was going to hit the jaw of the pocket there but not a favorable kiss on that red miss along the cushion <laughs> dear me this is difficult the one next to the black he's looking at if it's tight on the cushion you could take it on but uh, He's looking for something else, but there's very little else available, only uh, a safety, and not easy to get a good safety shot. Well, that really is unlucky. I mean, OK, the pink didn't go in the centre of the pocket, which have made the position slightly more difficult, but it's very unlucky not to have some sort of pot on here. He's almost on two reds into the left-hand corner, but not nicely on either of them. It looks like he's found one onto the... It doesn't look like it passes the green, but I presume it must do. It's amazing, he's awkward on all three reds that are possible then. He's looked at the one past the green, the one past the black, and the one uh, the other one past the black. He can play this one, but will he play it with a bit of pace or try and drop it in, get a bit of safety if he misses? Play it with a pace. Nothing wrong with that as long as it doesn't go over the middle pocket. Harry Hawkins, seven. He's got a good cue ball, as you can see. <laughs> If you were right in behind that red, you could pot it into the left middle pocket, but close to the cushion. He's 
still tried it, but that was uh, near enough impossible from that position. Oh, nice angle to get onto the black, but it's too dangerous. That's the reason he's queuing back, queuing with bottom on the ball to take the ball back into Bork. I mean, the easier pot would be to roll it in, but if he'd have missed it, he'd have left the two reds that are behind the black spot in the right-hand corner. A lovely angle there, but it was risky to get onto the black. Very one of these days, you see top players play a double, but that's a double that could be the catalyst of making a rather large break in this, uh, this last frame of the afternoon session. Funny enough, that double was his first pot for 18 minutes, and he's got an angle to get up to the red above the blue. Three. The last frame of the last session, I've never seen Ronnie concentrate so hard to take it. He played some unbelievable tactical play and little snookers, and he knew the importance of opening up that three frame advantage. He's doing the same here. Four. He's going to be hampered. Maybe tied up, and the way he's finished on this red, he couldn't do anything else. Let me just drop that in. He's just looking to see if he could possibly pop the black. What a bonus that would be! We'll find out shortly whether it pots. Ronnie thinks 12. it will. Just enough room to hit the red that's directly above the black. And that's turned out to be perfect. And this looks like a chance now to win the frame. Just, 19. Just, just move that red just above the black, just by a fraction, which made the black easier to get onto now. When he's shaking his head, maybe he feels that the angle he has on the red is not perfect. <coughs> Yeah, I think he's worried if he cannons the other red that he'd go out of position, but he should be okay. Well, he didn't risk playing for the black, so... 20. He's perfect on the blue, so he took the element of risk out of it there, Willie. Great shot, wasn't it? I've got to be honest, I thought he'd play for the black, but he... He thought he could have flicked that red towards the black and maybe not on it, but he's absolutely perfect on the blue. Taking Ronnie over three and a half minutes for this break. 25. Because he's taking his time, he knows the importance of it. Which is incredible when you 26. think back to that maximum break in 1997 when he made it in five minutes and 20 seconds. It'll never be equaled in the history of the game, that. Slightly, he'd like to be exactly straight on this red, but there's a gap in between the, the two reds to screw across and play 31. the black into the right-hand corner. I presume it pots in there. Not too sure they can get onto it in the, the same pocket. No, could hold it for that 30. pocket, so this is a great chance now to win this frame and take a five-frame lead. 94% pot success rate, that is... Going some, I can tell you. Thirty-one. 
39. 40. <clears throat> because the angle he has, he may risk playing the cannon onto the red and pink at exactly the same time, which pushes them both out of the way. There it is, little cannon to bring them both out of the way. Perfect on the red. 47. Looks like he may have to go for the blue here, but that shouldn't prove a problem. 48. And we talk about his positional play again, and he's just absolutely perfect every time. 53. 54. 59. He's going to need one more red to make absolutely certain of this final frame of this session. 60. And the red above the two is available. So it's going to be 15-10, but I'll tell you what, it's far from finished. 65. Barry Hawkins will have something to say this evening, you would feel. If he gets a chance, that 66. is. 66. Once again, this break didn't look on when he started. The black was pretty surrounded by a lot of reds. It was finished low on the first two or three blacks. The pink was out of commission because the reds were around it as well. And he's made 73 and counting, which could possibly end up being the 54th century of the tournament and the 13th for Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> Another exhibition position. The break goes to 81. 82. It's all about the tricky red along the cushion as to whether he gets another century. If he does, of course, it'll extend the winning centuries in the final to six. Yeah. 90. Mind, he's got to get nicely on the green. Has he got an angle to get over in behind it? 97. Doesn't appear so, does it? So the green at distance for a century. 99. Well, well stand by, genius at work. Another excellent century break from Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's six in this final. And he looks totally zoned in. <laughs> We've seen Taven, Stephen Fry there. We've seen Damien Hurst with a big smile on his face. 11. This is fabulous to watch. Oh, this has been a wonderful session of snooker. Barry Hawkins would be sitting there thinking, how on earth have I only won three frames? I've played great. But that's what oh, happens when you play at the top and of his form. The audience stand up, a standing you, ovation from this crucial crowd. Ronnie O'Sullivan taking what could be an unassailable lead into the final tonight. He leads by 15 frames to 10. Three sessions. Ronnie's won two of them, five three, and the other one five four. So mathematically, it's not been easy. But the way he's gone ahead of Barry whenever he's been in trouble has looked easy. Wow. Well, the first mistake of the four. evening is. Gone to Ronnie O'Sullivan, but he doesn't appear to have done any damage. 
Missed the long putt by quite a long way, but unlucky to going off. This is just a case, Stephen, isn't it, to, to just play no, no miss snooker, really, for Barry to get back into the match? Yeah, I must admit, this first frame is, is huge for Barry if he wants to, at the very least, take this final into the second session tonight. I feel if Ronnie wins the first frame, he might go in and win the next two. That's an excellent safety. He's loved this bullet, this final. He's really enjoyed it. I'm so pleased for Barry there. It was his family. We saw a, sh a shot of them. Father Steve, Caroline, mother, sister Tanya. And uh, they've absolutely been enthralled the way Barry's. But we've all known that Barry's <coughs> been a great player for a long, long time. But he's been a little bit embarrassed the way he played. But this final is proved to everybody that he's a force to be reckoned with. Well, it's an excellent reply from O'Sullivan. <clears throat> Taking this pot on, the one that's just below the pink spot there, there's the pot success rate, Barry over 91%. Normally, that would be enough to be in front in a match, but... When you're playing with Sullivan, things are not quite normal sometimes. <laughs> and you think they've played 25 frames and he's still got a 94% pot success rate. Incredible, really. Going over the corner, needs the blue or yellow to come to his rescue. And there may be a gap, not quite though. Obviously no problem getting back into Bork, but he feels it's too risky to try and cover the red, so he's just playing the roll up here. He's got to be careful in going off. Because <coughs> if he doesn't push the red safe and goes in off, he'll be in trouble. Well done. <laughs> Excellent pot. Excellent pot. And perfect on the green or the brown. These give you so much confidence, Steve, don't they, when you knock one of these in? Yeah, you would think if you'd missed that, the cue ball would be careering into the reds. And he's certain to leave a frame with an opportunity on. But as you say, it gives you great confidence to pot them. Perfect angle on the green. Virtually put the cue ball where he wants from that position. And he's not done Four. very well, to be honest. He'd have liked to have been on the two reds to the right hand side of the pack. The red in the middle, hampered queuing, is uh, not straightforward.
guys. In the end, they done well to pot this. But it was only able to concentrate in the pot. Couldn't play position. Couldn't get the right side of the blue. So this is a tester. Gotta screw back for the blue. You gotta hit these right. Ten. And talk depends about the red above the black. If if that if that pot's in the corner pocket, you've got every chance of in a few seconds and a few shots time bringing that black into play. You need to be on the blue though to get onto that red. Well, mind you, it looks like he's played for it now. Needs to slow up a little bit. Needs to put the brakes on. Just 14. got the wrong angle on the. He's seeing if he can finish on the black. There you can see the angle is not good. <coughs> if it, that cue ball would have stopped two or three inches before that, he would have been able to get onto the black. He still feels though he might be able to. Fifteen. Well, done very well there. Looked to didn't have the angle to get this close to the black. Really had to nip the cue ball there. I think that was a prime example, Stephen. What is a player pinching the pocket, you know, playing it off a jaw. That's how good these players can be when they're in stroke. And Barry Hawkins obviously queuing 22. very well now. Had to get the black back into play. He's done that. is perfect on the red in the right hand corner but obviously the black's not available into the left hand corner so he's looking for a chance to go top side of the blue again oh, didn't quite get it just right 23 so unless he pots a good yellow that could be under break got to swing it round in between brown and pink and off two cushions and Back on a red in the left-hand corner because that's where he can get onto the black if he gets onto one of those reds. Needs to miss that blue. Control the cue ball. You've got to keep so still. The cue's got to go in such a straight line. And now this is a frame winning opportunity after that shot. Is there any department that Barry's not competing? Is the break building department winning frames at one so visit? I mean, he's had more table time than Ronnie O'Sullivan in this match. He's had 51% of the table time, so he's been on the table more than Ronnie. 34. Just got to start making every chance a frame winning chance, and this is the one you'd be very disappointed if you didn't win the frame from here. Forty one. Forty two. Forty-nine, fifty-three point lead. So, two more reds, two blacks at least, and uh, he'd have done what Stephen suggested he needed to do. Just to let Ronnie O'Sullivan know he's not going to lie down, take the match beyond the interval. And there's the magnificent view from this packed crucible crowd. That's what they're seeing. Looking good, Stephen. Yeah, this is fabulous. 
57. I've seen before, a fantastic long red. And it's capitalised on that superbly. 58. And here we show you this with long red again. That was a must make shot. 65. He played an excellent shot with the rest a little later on in that break where he, he had to pot it. So great to see Barry 66. playing well. And it's a sign 73. of, obviously, the respect Ronnie's given Barry. The fact that every time he's got close, Ronnie's felt the need to, to raise a gear. 74. To stay in front. He's had to play brilliant snooker to stay ahead of Barry. 18. a few moments ago that uh, the only 81. thing he needed to improve was his scoring win and frame at one visit. He's done that now. He's only had one century in this match, but it was a fabulous break of 1-3-3. Three, three. The reason he rolled through slowly like that, because he's left now the perfect angle on the, as we see this red struggling, the angle he's got now is perfect and not the other red off the cushion. Does the red still pass the blue? It does. Ninety-two. But this is really ninety-three. Tough draw. Ninety-four. Ninety-four. Well played, Barry Hawkins. His fifth century at this tournament, warmly appreciated by the packed audience. His family won as well. His 55th century of the Crucible this year. And there's been eight centuries in this final now, which actually ties the record. One hundred and five. One hundred and nine. One hundred and fourteen. He needs an angle on this pink, and I don't think he's got a good angle. It would do really well to get past the middle pocket here. So much so, he may be doubling the black. 120. Or trebling the black. It's close. Trust me, it's close. Trust me, it's really close. Well, that's the way to start your first Crucible final with a magnificent token for those 127. He wins the first frame of the evening session and closes to four frames at 15-11. The next three frames, Barry threw in a break of 66, Ronnie replied with knocks of 77 and 88 to move him 17 frames to 12 clear. And that meant he needs only one more to claim a fifth world title. Barry Hawkins breaks off in what he hopes is not his last frame. Can he produce the snooker that he did at the start of this evening?
breaks of 127 and 66. If you've done it once, Barry, you can do it again. He really did look good, John. I was watching that, and he never looked like missing, Barry. Unbelievable. I think it's the best in the first frame when he made that marvellous 1-2-7. It's the best he queued in this match. Just had a bit of a setback when he missed a red along the cushion, but you could have seen him winning all the four frames before the mid-session interval, and then we would have had a titanic struggle, but that's what happened. You miss, and you leave Ronnie O'Sullivan in amongst the balls. And he's just a magician. But you just get the feeling that Barry still believes. Already going to be a, a little bit of an awkward frame with the red up the other side of the table. So behind the black is now the safety area. Barry can play a better one than Ronnie. Can he judge it? This looks good. Just a bit too far, but... Still got it tight on the cushion. You can't get back with the white tucked up there. of this little safety exchange but with the red so tightly packed it's hard to force your opponent into a mistake but the target will be try and get that cue ball in tight behind the black again What's he done here? That was uh, a little bit careless. Uh, has he got enough angle to give himself a possible chance of the black? Might be able to come off the other red and get a bit closer to the black. No, it was a very difficult situation. He couldn't really play it any harder striking over that red and he just couldn't get but he can roll tight up behind the black off the cushion oh that's a little careless there's a shot for the middle now for Barry Ronnie Hawkins one. <clears throat> mm, he's not taking it Pop, but he was concentrating on the safety there, but that was uh, interesting to see. He's not taking any chances, Ronnie. Looked like he could roll the other red to the middle, but uh, he wants to wait for a better chance. Yes, it was a good pot, but uh, by the looks of it, it doesn't look as though he snookered Barry, which is a little bit careless. So Barry may be able to get his cue ball back behind the black. And the reds are spread now. Purposely tried to play it into the green, but he didn't hit the green full enough. Well, he's left the red to the far left corner, but... He could have left something easier.
one. A round of applause <laughs> from Ronnie Jr. He's just overscrewed that slightly, but it's a little cutback. And it's there. How's the cannon? It's not bad. He's got the one to the middle pocket. If he can't Eight. see this one to the left corner. Well, if he can see the one to the left corner, Barry knows that this is a great chance for Ronnie. Nine. I know there's a long way to go, but great champions usually finish in style. 16. Seventeen. You know, John, when you speak at dinners and that, and you usually, I usually do a little thing. Who's the three greatest players that's ever played the game of snooker? Twenty-two. And two of them are sitting in the studio. And since 1990, twenty-three. I said Stephen Hendry overtook the great Steve Davis as the greatest player that ever played. And I had Ronnie at number three, but if he goes on to win this year's world championship, I'd have to put him at the top of the list and say that he is the greatest player that's ever picked a queue up. My personal opinion. Yeah, and I think the other two players you've mentioned will agree with you. The most natural talent the game has ever seen, there's no doubt. Somebody said to me the other day that if Ronnie wins the World Championship, what does that say about the other players? I said, well, all they can 36. do is just say that they played in an era of greatness. 37. And that's Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, he's the defending champion. He's won it on four occasions. It's looking good for a fifth 44. at the moment, but... He has a few more to pot yet. But it has to be said, 45. Barry Hawkins in this final has been superb. He really has put up a fantastic display. And if he had been up against any <coughs> other player, he could quite easily have been in front, John. He's played absolutely marvellous. And I think, really, this uh, will have done Barry the world of good. I know he'd be disappointed if he was to lose, but, boy, has he proved to everybody who loves snooker that he is going to be a major contender in many, many world championships. 50. He's a great match player, and he's proved that he's got a great temperament. Okay. Ronnie just having a quick look at the scoreboard. <clears throat> 50 points, the lead, 75 remaining. So just needs three of these remaining reds, to be sure. I'm sure Ronnie will say that uh, Dr. Steve Peters has been a big help to him throughout this year's World Championship. He really has Ronnie in a very positive frame of mind. He's got him mentally in a very happy place, and that's the gentleman 54. sitting there on the right, leaning on his knees. 55. Ronnie does go and stay with him. He's got a room in his house that Ronnie can use. And this has been absolutely fantastic. Ronnie Jr., well, they're all very pleased. And as you say, Dennis, like the true champion, he's finishing in style. We love the way he plays. And there's the little fist pump. Well done, Ronnie. 68. And the thing to remember is that we love 69. watching him play. And let's hope that this could just give him that urge to carry on. Yeah, we don't want to hear Ronnie saying he's going to retire. The game needs Ronnie O'Sullivan. And it's very rarely you see that from 75. the rocket. But he 76. must be feeling so good inside but once again Barry Hawkins has played his part in this year's world championship
but this man has done something very, very special here this year. And listen to the crowd. 84. Eighty-six. If he could get a century, it would be a record. It's not going to be a century. But what a fantastic defence of his world championship. A lot of people didn't think Ronnie O'Sullivan could do it. And Barry Hawkins coming along and congratulates him. What a smashing final we've had. Fair play to both players. But you're looking at a genius there. Ronnie O'Sullivan is a 2013 World Snooker Champion. Well, it was a hugely entertaining and high-scoring final, with no fewer than eight centuries, a record for a final, six of them to Ronnie, another record. And fittingly, it brought the curtain down on a championship in which no fewer than 131 tonnes were made. Again, a brand new standard for the event. As for Hawkins, well, he acquitted himself admirably and continues even now to challenge in the latter stages of the major events. But O'Sullivan, despite taking that year-long sabbatical, reigned supreme. Along the way, he joined Messrs Hendry and Davis as the only men ever to successfully defend the world title at the Crucible. You feel it, you know, you know within yourself if you're delivering or not. And uh, I knew I was delivering on that final and, and I knew that he was as well. It was one of them where we were both playing so well that we were just bringing the best out of each other. And very, very rarely does that happen. I played as well as I probably can do, really. and. Um... Yeah, no, he was, like I say, he was incredible. He, he didn't put a foot wrong over them two days. And um, if anybody says they could live with him when he was in that form, then they'd be lying. <laughs> Quite true, Barry. It was a wonderful fortnight of snooker for them both, but particularly for O'Sullivan, who at the age of 37 became the oldest champion at the Crucible since Ray Reardon in 1978. Many believe that he will add to his Hall of World titles into his 40s. And as we've seen with the Rocket, Nothing's possible.